just talk so much. He said, Lord, if that's really you, we know this story, don't we, y'all? He said, call me to come to you. This is Matthew 14, 28. He said, call me to come to you on the water. Just, 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 just call me to come. If, if it's you, let me come like you coming. And Jesus said, come on, Peter. He said, come like I'm coming. And he said, walk. Now these three words say what? Now when I say what, I want you to put your name in it. And you say did it. Now. See, that's what demons are saying tonight. Yeah, they, they, they talking about you. <laughs> oh, oh my God, they about to... Huh. See, 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 Peter did it. This is what I want to lock in. Because after you do it, then it gets rough. There's this moment between... When God says, I want to use you, and you do it when everything is like, you are the bomb ditty. You are it, lickety split. Peter did it. And why did he do it? Because Jesus said what? Come. And so the Bible says that Peter did it. He walked, y'all. Now, 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 most people who tell about this story, we get stuck on, 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 on verse 30, which says that Peter, after he started walking, he started noticing something. See, while he was walking, he was going toward Jesus. And what, what, if you start reading your Bible and you read on verse 30, Peter started listening to what the Bible calls boisterous winds, strong winds, blowing winds. He started hearing other noise. Now let me talk to y'all. Let's just talk one-on-one. -on -one. Please don't expect us to start this mad movement toward making a difference, blessing the lives of parents who are raising teenagers. Please don't think that God is going to give you this awesome revelation and you will do something that no one has ever done nationally, locally, or even on a state level or in a city level to say, we're going to call parents of teenagers together. And in order to save the children, you've got to prepare the parents for their return. And that's what the Lord has laid on my heart. Now, don't expect all of that to go down. And halfway through it, somebody's going to want to say, Ooh, what, what's that first word? No, 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 no. What's your name? Uh, okay. <laughs> now, 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 don't expect somebody to say, Ricky did it. Because when they say that, uh, the devil says, oh, so he's out of the boat. No, 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 no. No, until this year, you didn't have a husband to attack. You didn't have a wife to attack. You didn't have children to attack. You didn't have a business to attack. You didn't have a house to attack. You didn't have a car. Do you get what I'm saying? But when you finally... I'm just talking about somebody who wants your life back. Because, because when it happens, you'll think that's how you're going to die. No, that's how you're going to call him again. Now, now, now hold on. <laughs> you're getting ahead of me. <laughs> the first thing we heard Peter say was, Lord, if it's you. And so Jesus said, come Come on out here and walk. And so Peter did it. Most people focus on, 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 on that. And, and what, what, what we do is we tend to go back to that verse, verse 30, when Peter heard the wind. And he got a little distracted. 
And that's what happens to us, y'all. Because stuff in the natural will make you think you're going to die. I want to say that now. Let's, let's hear it again. You're doing something that the Lord said do. And Satan heard you. And then you heard. And then you felt. And then everything. See, that's the and then. You start listening to that outside. I don't know how many of you are where you were last night when that rain hit. But wherever you were, you got up. And you started thinking, oh, Jesus, now where am I going to go if tree falls? You know, because rains make you go. You don't even think about outside until you hear something outside messing with your inside. I bet you none of you looked out to see how dark it was. But you get that rain. You get that. Then you get that rain that sounds like that's ice. You started moving your cars out by the street if you live on a hill. That boisterous wind. I'm just, I'm just telling you this evening, all of us together, they're going to come. And they're going to scare you. I want to talk real talk to you. You're going to go to the doctor and the doctor is going to say, we see something that looks cancerous. Listen, that's a verse 30. They wouldn't have read it if you hadn't done it. No, no, no. Out of all the people in your family, you stepped out of the boat to go get a mammogram. You, you did. You stepped out of the boat to go get a prostate check. You stepped out of the boat and say, check me out. And the boisterous wind says, oh, you're in trouble. You're going to die. And, and now when we look at this story, and I know we know it, but I just have to remind us because I need you to remind me sometimes. Just because it shows up does not mean you have to die from it. And let's say this. Had Peter never stepped out, the winds wouldn't have stepped out either. See, the winds were already acting a fool. That's why Jesus stepped on the scene. See, Satan's acting up way before you step out. But by faith, he said, Lord, if it's you, let me come. And so Jesus said, okay, come on. And then he walked out into Jesus' world. <laughs> okay, that's not funny to anybody but me. Some people think they want what you have. The just shall live by what? So everything that comes into your life got to be dealt with by to other people, it just looks like a house note or a car note. That was a faith move. So they want what you have. They don't hear the wind every first of the month. They don't see the waves every first of the month. They don't deal with the hatred and the jealousy every first of the month. All they say is, Ricky did it. But I want to have a hard gut check with you for a minute. They weren't there. Watch this now. Watch this. I'm going to say it. They weren't there when Ricky regretted it. I shouldn't even say it. That didn't even sound preacher like, did it? No, I'm talking to somebody else. You stepped out, but now you regret it. How do we know Peter regretted it? Because... After he heard the stuff in the natural, you know, folk gone and 
Do this. Go on, let's go there. Go on, put your money down for it. Go on, you can afford it. God told you to sow it. Somebody told you to buy it and throw it. God said, don't, 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 don't do that. Sow this and I'm going to give you more than you ever had. But somebody said, girl, you can afford it. That was that boisterous wind. Isn't it amazing how some folks are always speaking into your finances but never put nothing in your pocket? Boisterous wind. They're always telling you about how much hair to get and how many clothes to buy and what you ought to drive and where you ought to live. They never put nothing down. They just get you out. And they'll always have a resource or somebody to compare you to. And so there's Peter. This time he had no example. The only model he had was who? Case closed. If your model is Jesus, step out. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody walk through this. Because when you step out and all these other distractions come, you better keep looking to who called you out. <laughs> 